Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Ask Dr. Bob. We have some very interesting questions once again and I do appreciate all of them that come through us various venues. The first one comes from an individual, Her, um, she's 47 years old and she went to her healthcare provider recently because she was skipping her regular menstrual cycles and he mentioned something to her that her uterus wall was thinning. So there was a medication that she was put on called Dufaston or D-U-P-H-A-S-T-O-N which happens to be progesterone. If she was just kind of wondering about what was going on, if that is a medication she should be taking. Well in our book, Dr. Bob's Drugless Guide to Balancing Female Hormones, we talk about hormone replacement therapy and what we have found the most significant area that you need to approach and attack is increased adrenal gland function. And you can check your adrenal glands pretty simply by having a blood pressure test done by first sitting down, have someone take your blood pressure, and then stand up. Your blood sh pressure should rise. If it decreases, it might suggest uh, adrenal fatigue. Your adrenal glands make progesterone. You may also consider having an adrenal stress index, and depending on those saliva test findings, treat accordingly with appropriate nutrition. Dr. Bob, what are the correct milligram supplements of calcium, vitamin D, iodine, and B vitamins one should take? Well, that entirely depends on the type of products that you're taking, because every corporate line is a little bit different. I know in our practice, I personally take about four to 6,000 units of vitamin D and that's a liquid about two or three drops on my tongue. I also take up to 12 milligrams of iodine every day. The calcium that you take and the B vitamins basically depends on the, the company that you're working with. I always encourage low dosage products will make the very best um, approach for your overall long-term health. Dr. Bob, I have a problem with my husband who has elevated uric acid and I want to know what can I do to lower the uric acid without medication. Well, in our practice we use something called folate. It has been used and shown to help lower uric acid levels. You may consider having a CBC at the differential and look at those values also to make sure that you don't have an elevated MCV or an MCH. But we've had great success using B12 and folate in our practice. Hi Dr. Bob, I feel really healthy and I recently switched to being a vegan and now I also am having itching on the inside of my ankles and I want to know what's going on with that. Well a lot of times what I have found from my experience that vegans tend to maybe have a mineral imbalance and sometimes depending on the type of vegan that you are you focus on a lot of maybe grains and grains deplete the body of calcium so I want you to be aware of that sometimes I see itchy skin due to a calcium deficiently, deficiency. I had someone that recently said that they lost hair and they also went to a, more of a vegetarian diet about three years ago and they didn't know if they were losing the hair because of the diet change. And I know from my experience, oftentimes if you're not eating right or you're underneath a tremendous amount of stress, you may in fact start to lose your hair. Your body needs adequate iodine, it needs adequate minerals for thyroid function. And oftentimes, if you start to deviate and eat a plant-based food only, and you deviate and have pastries with sugar in it, it could sabotage your health. So if you're going to decide to be a vegan or a vegetarian, I would really focus on um, organic green vegetables, saute them, don't eat them exclusively raw. You could steam them, make a variety of your foods. That would make a huge difference for you. Finally, Dr. Bob, um, what are thyroid foods that can cause a low thyroid. Well, there's a lot of opinions about this, and I know oftentimes people mention goitrin food, like broccoli, cabbage, and cauliflower, which I promote. I know that there, one third of the world is estimated to have subpar thyroid function. I know 72% of you watching me right now do not have enough iodine, so I believe from my experience that broccoli, cabbage, and cauliflower eating them are not the reason people have subpar thyroid function. If you do decide to wisely Choose those foods, steal them, saute them, don't eat them exclusively raw. Once again, thank you for these wonderful questions, and I hope it makes a difference in each and every one of your lives.